So here's the here's what we're going to do. The basic idea is called an iteration, iterative prediction of motion. Iterate just means repeat many times. So iterative prediction of motion. And, and here's the outline of what we're going to do. First, we calculate all the forces acting on a system. And we add them up to get F net. So Then we use the momentum principle to predict the momentum of the system in the future. So um, apply momentum so we get P future is P now plus F net delta T. So now we know it's momentum, but we don't know where it is. So the next step is find the new p position of the system. So we have our final is our initial plus uh, V average. Some, some approximation to V average. And this may, in fact, just be p final over the mass, if assuming things are going small, slowly compared to the speed of light. Or we might really calculate, um, you know, vx in initial plus vx final over two, if we if we know that it's that it's happening at constant constant force. And then what happens is we do the whole thing again. Because now the forces may have changed. So now I have to go back and recalculate all the forces, find a new net force. Then we use the momentum principle again. Then we find the new position. We do it again. We do it again. We do it again. And we just can do it as long as we can calculate the forces. We can just do it forever and predict the motion of the system arbitrarily into the future, no matter how complicated it is. So let's try a simple example just to just to sh just to make this very concrete, and we'll do a simp just we'll do one step just to make this make it clear what we're doing here. So we'll do one step, and then we'll do something more interesting that involves actual changing forces. So we'll do we'll talk about a fan card because we've talked about that before. And so here's what we're going to do. Uh, suppose we have a fan cart that's moving. Let's see here. OK. A fan cart that's initially moving in the negative x direction. But the f air is exerting a force in the positive x direction. So we're going to calculate where it gets to in a certain amount of time, just to go through this whole thing once. So it's not not particularly uh, elaborate. So here's our fan cart. It's on this track. Uh, here's x equals 0. The track is 2 meters long. So here's x equals 2 meters. We put the fan cart here at at one meter. It has some initial velocity v initial, but the force of the air is that way. And we're going to calculate where it is after half a second. And here are the numbers we're going to use. We're going to use numbers just to make it extremely concrete. We're going to say that 
its mass is 0 0.8 kilograms. Its initial position, it's in the middle, so that would be 0, 0.1, 0 meters. At the moment we start looking at it, it's already moving. I had already given it a push. And so its initial velocity is negative 0.500 meters. It's going in the negative x direction. Let's say that we have measured the force that the air exerts on the cart when the fan's turned on by hooking it up to a spring and measuring how much the spring stretched. Yes, it should. Thank you. It's not a meter in the air. You're absolutely right. It's not up here. It's down there. Um, and 0. Point, so we'll say it's about a third of a newton. And we're going to consider a time interval of 0. 0.5 seconds. Now we know there's some other forces acting on this too. There's certainly a gravitational force due to the Earth. The track is put as a contact force, the track pushing up. Because the momentum is not changing in the y direction, we know those forces have to sum to zero. So we're only going to concentrate on the x direction. And so we're going to say that, and we're going to assume that the friction force is very small compared to the air force. May or may not be a good assumption. So that for the moment, we're going to say this is the net force. So here's where we just start. So we've got the net force is 0 0.300 newtons. So that's step one. Step two, apply the momentum principle. So we have P in the future. Momentum now plus, uh, what's momentum now? We better put it in. So its velocity is currently negative 0 0.500 meters. It has a mass of 0.8 kilograms. So we have 0 0.8 kilograms times a negative 0 0.500 meters. That's its current momentum. Now we need the net impulse. So that's 0 0.300 newtons times the time, which is 0.5 seconds. And so we do some arithmetic, and here we get negative 0 0.400 kilogram meters per second. And here we get. 0.1500 newton seconds. So we've already established that those two sets of units are actually the same. So we get a momentum after 0.5 seconds of negative 0 0.2500 kilogram meters per second, which makes sense. It's it's clearly slowed down, and that makes sense because the force was the direction opposite to its motion. So now we know it's no momentum, but we don't know where it is. So we've got to extract the velocity out of this so we can update its position. Well, since this was a constant force, we could actually take V initial plus V final over 2 and get an average velocity. And that would be, a, in this case, a better thing to do. But we're going to do it in a slightly less accurate way, we'll say the final, we can calculate the final velocity. That's just the final momentum over the mass. So that's negative 0 0.2500 kilogram meters per second divided by 0.8 kilograms or a negative 0.31300 meters per second. Oh, we can use V average. Since, since we know it's a constant force, we can actually calculate a V average. So V average is V final plus V initial over 2. Don't get confused by 
this, this is an average. Remember, you add up the numbers and divide by the number of things you added together. Okay, this is not delta V. This is this is an, the average that you learn to do in fourth grade. Okay, um, except that it's vectors. And so we're going to take this number and that number and average them, and we get something like. Um, negative 0 0.40700 meters per second. And now we need to use that to update the position. So we say our final is our initial, which was 100 zero zero meters plus the average, which was negative 0.40700 meters per second times delta t, which was 0.5 seconds. And that comes out to 0 0.79700 meters. So that's, that's where it is. And then if we wanted to find out where it was going to be half a second later, we'd have to do it again. So questions about that? 